Welcome to Real Bass Lessons. Today I want to teach you some improvisation, and I want this to be uh, clarified as just for bass players. <laughs> There's a very specific reason, and I'll get into it. I need to say up front that this is a real difficult lesson for me to teach because the kind of stuff I'm going to show you right now, I normally teach this oh, for months and often a year or two with a student before it really starts to happen well. And the tendency is here on this website is we want things that you can look at in 15 or 20 minutes and go, great, I can do that, I got it. Well, you can conceptually understand everything I'm gonna tell you, I'm sure, but I promise before it sinks in well enough that you can actually play it, it's gonna take hundreds and hundreds and thousands of, thousands of hours of practice. And if that depresses you right now, well, I'm sorry. That's what it takes to become a really good player. But there's no reason why you can't get started. And I can uh, just say, here's what you need to do, and hopefully you'll do it. In general, that's not good teaching. I've learned that. I have to work with my students and do exactly what they're supposed to be doing weekly, for months, for years. But let's jump into it. What I'm talking about is simply learning how to improvise over some simple chord changes. Remember that uh, little song Rob Gurley and I played a couple weeks ago? It went D7 to G7. Then it went to E7. Then it went to A7. Sure. I'll play a little bit here just so you can get a feel for it. Two, three. Get that sound in here. Good. Now write what I just said a moment ago. Excuse me, you get the thing out of the way. Get that sound in your ear. That's what it's all about. I practiced the bass for a number of years and really couldn't hear until someone played them. In my inner ear, in my hearing, I couldn't hear the chord changes that I was trying to improvise over. Now, of course, when play-alongs came out, that was an incredible thing. I could play along with a little play-along track and it worked. But only until, within all of my students and people I've taught, only until you start being able to play these chords on your instrument and hear them in your inner ear when you're not playing them, only then can you really start to make sense of what you're playing over. Otherwise, it's just a cerebral game of going, am I doing the right thing? Or it's just hope and pray and go, man, I hope some of this works. <laughs> so what we need to do, and let's work with that progression again. It's just D7, G7, E7, A7. It kind of goes around and around. Now, they're all dominant chords, so that means you need to learn the chords. And if right now that doesn't make sense to your ear, again, it's just that we're going to have to do this a lot. What do I do is I reach up here and I notice that the third and the seventh are just right beside each other. And here's the root. Well, if I go to that G chord, which is up a fourth, I just back down a half step and there becomes the seventh and the third. They turn around on each other. Third and seventh of D, seventh and third of G, up to E, two frets up from where D was, third and seventh, and then seventh and third of that A. So your chord changes sound like this. So that's the first thing you need to get comfortable with in your ear. For the moment, I'm going to play that little bass line. Just listen to it. Three, four. Listen, listen to it again. Now, can you play that third and seventh over the top? Here it comes. Keep doing it. Do it 
do it some more. Get it right. G7. A7. You play the bass line. Now. Let's both play the bass line. You play the chords. Let's stop. Cool. Now this is the kind of thing I'm talking about. You need to practice these oh so much that you can play this bass line and you're hearing in your inner ear with no one play you're hearing. Notice I'm doing them real quiet. Or you need to be able to play the chords and hear that bass line. I'm not much of a singer, but I've got to be able to recognize those sounds. Boom, 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 bam, that they go with those sounds there. By the way, I'll answer the question, then I'll just move on, and that is, well, Jim, what about using all the other notes in the chords? No, the third and seventh gives you the idea. See, if we play the root, we have no idea what chord that is. That's just a, a, a D. Is it D major, D minor, D diminished? That third tells you whether it's major or minor, and that dominant seventh tells you whether it's a dominant chord or a major chord. Yeah, there's others, but we want to learn that third and seven. So I'm going to play it with the drum machine here and play along with me and I'll tell you what to play, okay? This is exactly how I practice this with my student. Here we go. You play the root by yourself. One, two, three, four. G. A7. I'll play it with you. Again, keep playing the root. Play that root again. Start to hear that connection? Play the root again. the chords. Do it again. Play the chords. Play the chords by yourself. Play the chords again. Keep playing the chords. Don't get confused by all the stuff I'm doing. Still play those chords. say this, I do it in all my lessons, but if you're just watching this, you're probably getting real bored. Well, sure. Get your bass out and play with me, and I promise you won't be bored. You'll love it. And you'll start to go, oh my god, I need to do this a lot. 
Yeah, because there's a lot more chords than just dominant chords we need to learn the sound of, and there's combination of chords we need to learn the sound of. This is a pretty simple one because the chord sounds are right beside each other, and it's the same voicing. So that is the beginning of learning to improvise. You say, I don't understand, Jim. What about playing all the solo stuff? Well, <laughs> how about we learn the sounds of the chords that are being played so that solo stuff we add makes some sense. Again, you can just guess. Yeah, sure, that's fine. But uh, most of us get tired of that. We want to know. We want to have that feeling. And I'm not talking about knowing by going, oh, it's an A7. I have to play this. No. What sounds good on those notes? Let me show you just a little bit of that now, okay? So here we are, and we've got D7. Well, you can you can you can play over a D, a D triad, then G7. You can play over a G triad, but that sounds pretty dumb. All of a sudden, we're chasing, we're moving for each chord, and we're say playing the same shapes. How about if we find a few notes that fit good on both of them? How about this? Ooh, booty booty do. Let's just play that phrase over and over. One, two, three. Again. Let's do it together. Leave that space. Here it is again. You do it and I'll play the chords. Do it again. Bo -de -bo -de -da. Bo -de -bo -be -da. You play the bass line. Now, I'm assuming if you can play this with me, you're feeling it. It feels freaking great when you've got a line that isn't chasing the chords, but it sounds like this little melody, and because we're leaving that space, it sounds like a little question answer. I mean, what feels better than the space? bo dee bo dee da mm. Yeah, 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 dig that shit. bo dee bo dee da Of course. Now, there's a bunch of different things you can play. I mean, there's endless things you can play, really, but we want to work on some of the fundamental ones. Got the idea? Let's make it sense? Good, let's do it again now. I'm going to put the drum machine on, and I'm going to yell out which part for you to play. Either the bass line, or the chords, or the melody. We're going to call that the melody, because that's the phrase I used in that other video with Rob for my little melodic, opening melodic phrase. Here we go. Let's both play the bass line. One. Two, ready, play. Keep it simple. You stay on the bass line. Stay there. Stay on that bass line. Do it again. Yeah, you go to the chords. Hearing those sounds? Stay on those chords. Hear that bass line going? Do it again. Stay on that, those chords.
stay there on it. So let's both play that melody. Two, three. Do the melody again. Do it again. Stay on that melody. Both of us in the bass line. Keep it simple and play with me. You keep playing the bass line. Yeah, let's stop. That was something like that melody I played when I played with Rob. It had a four-part phrase. By the way, so how do you play solo on melody? Well, you get some notes, and I was doing these. So I just went. And uh, I knew this was going to sound good because I could hear that in my head. And then. And then. You start to hear a part go by in your head, and that informs you, that tells you what you should play against it. That's really good playing. It's not guesswork. It's not theory. It's a lot of practice on the fundamental of bass line, harmony, which is the chords, and a little solo or melodic phrase. Now, you notice this is real simple stuff? <laughs> Uh, I saw a clinic uh, a while back by a very famous bassist, wonderful player named Gary Willis. And I knew Gary back at North Texas when he simply did not play well. He'll tell you that. He's, and in the clinic, he talked about, man, I was worried about all those chord scales and all that stuff. And he said, I just couldn't start thinking about it. And his reference, his fundamental of how he learned to improvise and how he recommended it was exactly what I'm telling you here. He said, get one chord or two chords and work out some real simple little sounds that sound good with it. You can always add to it and make it more complicated later. But the challenge is, is most of us get a bunch of stuff going in our head and we just don't know what to do. Either that or we just blow it off and guess. And if you all notice, that doesn't work either. Every once in a while you hit a few right notes, but most of the time it doesn't happen. I used to tell a student of mine who started recording a bunch, and I said, man, you ever, you ever go in the studio and you record and you just hurry running in to get in the booth and go, man, I got to hear it. Hope to see if I did really well. Well, if, if that's you, you didn't do really well. <laughs> or you were just lucky. No, you have to know what you're doing and work it out. Now, again, I said, what's the challenge here? You got to play it a lot. You got to just play the bass line a lot. Can you hear that melody? chords and then of course put them together Sure, you can do this. You really can. You may need a little recording device of which, you know, you can put the bass line in and then play the melody against it. But that's not, that's not what we want to start with. We want to start with learning the three parts and being able to play them without the other parts going on so we start to hear that going on. And by the way, again, you're not going to hear the bass line when you're playing these other parts until you've done it tons. And the same with the other three parts. When you play the chords, you get it down. As soon as you shift to the melody, only when you've played the chords enough do you continue to hear them. Um, 
somebody asked me, and I purposely quoted the same, uh, used the same phrase that a really good friend of mine and mentor, John Laporta, used many years ago when I uh, made a recording with him. John was, I believe, 82 at the time. And this interviewer said, John, now that you've been playing like well over 50 years, what's different about your playing? And he said, well, I'm finally starting to play what I hear. <laughs> and he was dead serious. Well, I quoted that just recently. Jim, how do you figure that stuff out? Well, I'm just about able to start playing a little bit of stuff what I hear. It takes a long time to get it in. Some people get it in quicker, some don't. But the good news is just the repetition will make it happen. Let's do that little game one more time, okay? Let's all start, both start with the bass line. Here we go. Ready, play. You go to the chords. You stay with the chords. Stay there. Good, you go to the bass line. still keep your spot in that melody. Do it, keep going. Let's go back to the root, both of us. Bass line. Man, when this gets going like this, I don't want to stop. And this is what I'm talking about. When I teach my students, we do this for an hour on just the little one chord progression. And we work on different parts. Then we work on different melodic parts. Then maybe we work on a specific bass line or different chord voicings on the same stuff. Like Gary Willis said, simplify it and work on some of that same stuff. So you're playing something that sounds good to your ear and you can duplicate it. That's the trick. Hope this helped you. Fired up. <laughs>